Chelsea 6. Wolves 2, if you predicted that, congratulations, my crikey. Uh, quite something there. Uh, where did this come from, Cray? Uh, you have to say this is off the training ground. You've got to give Moresco credit here. Th this is the statement result of the weekend. Not Arsenal, not anybody else. Six goals at a well-organised place in Wolves, who, by the way, in the first half, it could have went either way. Were Chelsea open? Yes. But the way they're playing, and by the way, no surprise, the disciple of Guardiola has the full-back in the middle of the park, Gusto. So Gusto comes in the middle, they go three at the back, and we've seen this movie before, Liverpool are doing it, City have done it for a while, and they flood the midfield. But interestingly enough, after our big discussion last week, Cole Palmer was playing as a 10. Right. Now, Cole Palmer was playing in a 10, Lavia was injured. So it was Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez and Cole Palmer in there. Now, would he have made that change had it not been for injury? We don't, we don't know. But the other change, Madweki, as you say, was absolutely flying from the first minute. Uh, so that was a big statement from him. It was much better from Nico Jackson. And not that we learned anything, but Mihaila Mudrich is just going to be a waste of time as a starter. Uh, Pedro Neto will play there. He came on there, but he will play. Mudrich is just not consistent enough. But in terms of performance, what was different? What was so blindingly obvious to me from the Tuchelera, which had some success, to the Pochettino time, which got a little better, was the speed particularly in the second half. The speed in which Chelsea got it up into the front man and then peeled runners off. Peeled runners off and just got bodies in there. And I'll give Jackson credit. I've been critical of him. He got his goal. But some of his little flicks when they played the ball up to him, to, to runners, was excellent. And I think the speed in which Chelsea moved the ball was way better, and it's only one game, and I know that, it's a long season, and they could revert back to, to, to mediocrity and sort of pedestrian play, but I don't think so. I think it was clear, clear to me that this manager wants the ball shifted from back to front quicker mm -hmm. and not to allow teams to set, and they did it brilliantly. As I say, Gusto came in, and Palmer and Fernandez they split a little bit, and it allowed the space for that ball up to Jackson and then they got runners. It was absolutely brilliant. And of course, then what you need is end product. And Madweke was end product personified. Absolutely hitting the target, driving it low. And then you bring the cavalry on, the game's dead. <coughs> Joe Felix puts the, the icing and the cherry on top of the cake. That was a brilliant, brilliant second half performance against a Wolf side who I think are more than decent. Right. And yeah, they had their own defensive problems. I mean, the left back and standing in midfield holding people's hands when they've got Palmer and they've got uh, uh, Madweki out there. It wasn't great from a Wolves perspective, but I want to give all the credit here to Chelsea. That was something for the fans to go, wow. If we can move the ball as quick as that, uh, be as clinical as that, and be as incisive as that, uh, without leaving themselves as open at times as they were, they're going to be exciting to watch this season. And it must just change the whole feeling within the dressing room. Yeah? You go into training now, you're looking forward to what's going on, just changes the, the whole outlook from just that brilliant performance in a 6-2 And it's the way you did it, as I say, the way that I think from a coaching perspective, how they would just took this Wolves side apart. And it would have been easy for Wolves had Chelsea popped it around at the back and into the middle and then back again. And they still have some issues. I mean... Caicedo gets caught in the ball now and again, and sometimes it's a bit rash. You get caught in the ball, I think, was for the first goal that, that Wolves got themselves back into the game. So it wasn't without flaws. Of course it wasn't. But to score six goals and to score the goals in the manner in which they did and the way that they played... And the one thing a lot of us have been critical about Chelsea under Tuchel and under Pochettino was it was, a, it was slow. Mm -hmm. It was a little slow, it was a little pedestrian, and I think we, we, we had a, a really good glimpse in the second half of when they speed the play up, they not only have the quality there, but they have the pace within this side from every area to just rip teams apart. And of course, Cole Palmer in that role in there scored a fantastic goal, but it was just picking these passes and 
it was as good as I've seen from Chelsea in the Premier League for a long time. Yeah, I was going to say, did you see this coming at all? No, no, no not at all. And, and, and even where we were looking at this during, during the first half, and I'm thinking, this, this has got 4 4 written all over it. Yes. Both teams, kind of, uh, uh, to Craig's point, open and bombing on at each other and, and, and really, really testing, testing the opponent. To, to, to your question about the importance of this result, given, given the result of match day one and all the speculation, mm -hmm. we spent a, a week as well. Yeah, Raheem Sterling, we talked about that. Yeah. Was, or everything else. Enjoyed um, that. And, <laughs> and, and now all of a sudden, that's long forgotten. What Raheem Sterling and, and his camp has to say and what yes. anybody else has to say and how many squ of the Chelsea squad and, and who Maresca is using and who's out in the cold is long forgotten. And, and, um, and that's what this result does. It allows you to now focus on what you have, who you have, you, who your primary squad is, mm. and building on that going forward with a, with a, a sense that, yes, it's, it's, it's working and everything else just becomes noise. As I said last week, it was us and everybody else on the outside bothered about the Raheem Sterling kerfuffle where inside Chelsea, apart from the financial side of it, which is obviously nothing to be scoffed at because he's on huge wages and they're going to have to deal with that. From a football perspective... Nobody was really fussed. And it's not because Chelsea were going to score six at Wolves. It's because they're moving on from that player. Mm -hmm. right? They're moving on from that player. Now, one of the important things here is, and, and Maresca has come from a, uh, via Leicester, but via Man City and others, where he worked with a touchdown at Guardiola, where he has been the king of setting the bar. Standards. Chelsea today set this bar. And I think if I was Maresca, I'd be saying... Standards. Right. That's we try and attain that every week we go on the field. The pace of play, the purpose in the pass, the runners from midfield, the runners from wide position, the end product, whether it be the final ball into the box or the finish from Madweki. But we've set standards today. Can they get better defensively? Of course they can get better defensively. Wolves gave them a lot of problems, particularly in the first half. But they set a standard today in the way that they played. Uh, going forward, that I, I think the coach has to take that video and say, listen, guys, this is what we're working on. This is what we need to take forward. We might not be able to attain this level every week, but this is what we try and do. We stretch the game, we stretch teams, we get it forward quickly, and we flood forward with numbers. And if we do that, they will cause teams, I think, maybe it'll be different when they play the Arsenals and the Cities again and maybe Liverpool. Maybe it'll have to be a, a slight change, but I think if they play like that against the bulky teams in the Premier League, they'll rip them apart. Uh, Chelsea then get their first win of the season.